On Vine Street, in the urban core of Kansas City, Missouri, there is a man growing fresh herbs and vegetables and teaching his neighbors about where their food comes from. Whitney Manny joins Mike Rowland in his greenhouse to find out more about Ophelia's Blue Vine Farm. Come on in, welcome Whitney wow. to Ophelia's Blue Vine Farm. Mike, thank you so much for having me. I would have never known that this place was right here in the heart of the city, in Kansas City, off of Vine. This is amazing. Well, thank you. I wanted to do something really cool for the neighborhood. Yeah. And, um, and our focus is culinary herbs, so things that you cook with, we want to make your food taste better. It smells so good in here to me. I am ready to dig in. Mike, give me a little rundown about Ophelia's. Like, what made you say, this is my life's purpose? Well, my grandmother's name was Ophelia, mm -hmm. and I spent every summer with her in Illinois. She was a seamstress by trade, but she grew up okay. on a family farm that we still have is over 100 years old. Wow. And so every summer, I used to tend to her garden, and she taught me a lot of life lessons, you know, and she taught me how to farm on a small scale. And I wanted that connection when I got married and had kids. I wanted them to know what real food tastes like, what mm. real tomatoes taste like, the smell of a of an English rose. And so when we moved to Kansas City and I got married, I, I started to dabble in urban farming. You yeah. know, we just started growing on different lots and we ended up selling at the Ivanhoe Farmers Market. So we did that for seven years and it was a great experience to give back in the community. It was a great experience for me to bond with my children and, um, and, to, learn, and to meet a whole bunch of different people, to grow mm -hmm. on a whole bunch of different types of soil. When the pandemic hit, the market had closed up and we didn't have an avenue to sell any of our produce. And mm. you, we did what we could. We put in a right. walk-up walk up window, window in here. We got um, a pellet stove, my first pellet stove. Mm -hmm. I said, wow, if I could heat the greenhouse through the first year, I bet I can keep those plants alive. So let me ask you this, because bringing up heat, yeah. we are in Missouri. You yeah. know, the weather is volatile <laughs> at any time yeah. of the year. Did you like kind of think that through when you were in the planning process? Was that a part of your business plan? Yeah. Were you thinking like, I need to be able to be sustainable all four seasons? Originally I wasn't, mm -hmm. you know, but as I saw where the economy was going, mm -hmm. as I saw where climate, the climate change that yeah. was going, I understood the fact of, um, well, I want to be in charge of my own destiny, you yeah. know? So up here we have, uh, these are electric heaters and those are backup. If something were to happen with our other heaters that are off the grid, those mm -hmm. would kick on. Those are okay. very expensive. Those are like $100 a night to run. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, okay. Like they will keep stuff in here alive. Okay. So that's a backup, right? Right. So I didn't want to have ro be uh, caught up in rolling blackouts and, right. and the the power company is going to cut your stuff off to save the grid regardless right. of if, if you pay your bill or not. Yeah. That you're using a whole bunch of power, they're yeah. going to be like, yeah. hold up. Exactly. <laughs> okay. So this one runs off uh, wood pellets, which was perfect, okay. but we got a grant through uh, Casey Gift and it allowed us to buy this furnace right over here okay. we call Big Bertha. And, <laughs> and that burns corn. Okay. Yeah. So corn. And, and Where are you getting corn? Other types of biofuel. So uh, in the past, we've uh, bought the corn. Mm -hmm. um, now we're hooking up with um, Vine Street, the brewery down the okay, street. Okay, cool. So uh, we're going to get their spent grain. And so that's just a, a, a way that we can be more sustainable. And right. So that product doesn't have to go out, trucked out to a land to a landfill somewhere. Right. We could take it here. We could dry it. We could pelletize it. We can, per we can burn it. And we, we're going to turn that into energy. Yeah. So it's like you have the community connections. On top of sustainability, you're reducing, reusing, which is amazing. Okay, so let's backtrack just a little bit. Mm -hmm. I know the significance and the history of it. I'm a KC born and raised. We are in the Vine District near 18th and Vine, Vine Street. Talk to me a little bit about the significance of Vine, like the historical significance and how that plays into Ophelia's. Yeah. The historical significance of this area is huge. I mean, 18th and Vine, where Bebop was born. Right. I mean, we're on 24th and Street, right right down there. Right. 18th and Street. Michael Jackson, when they're talking about going back to Kansas City, it's right down <laughs> they're there. They're talking about down That's there. That's where we're yeah. at, you know. And musically, uh, we have that. We have the Negro League Museum. Mm -hmm. um, traditionally, this street was black excellence. Right. You know, and although right. you don't see it here, uh, across the street, there was a taxi stand. There was mm -hmm. movie theaters. And so I wanted to be a part of that, you mm -hmm. know, going to the Blue Room and saying, Oh man, this has such uh, uh, such worth, such uh, excellence mm -hmm. attached to it, and I wanted to do something really cool for the neighborhood, really cool to the area. And so I got the idea to bring Ophelia's down here to get, have a greenhouse in the city in a mm -hmm. place that no one would expect it. It's all about plugging in and actively being a part of the community. I mean, you know, growing up here, it's been through so many phases, the Vine District, and it's cool to see like 
you know, new business owners, up and comers, like really plugging in and doing our best to revitalize and bring pride back down here, which I think is amazing. Talk to me a little bit about working with the houseless community. Like, how important is that? Because it feels like a definite, like, beneficial relationship for both parties. Was that something that you came into this space knowing you wanted to do, or were you just observant and said, you know what, what else can I do to help? I started this all by myself, mm -hmm. you know? And, and I, as I would be working, people would stop and, hey, you need some help? And mm -hmm. for a long time, I was I, I was like, no, I don't need any help. Mm -hmm. But then after a while, there's certain people, you know, that you can trust to do certain tasks. And right. over the years, you build up a relationship, mm -hmm. you know? And I really want to see these people win because they have stories. They're people's mothers and daughters somebody. And, ch and, and, and children and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And a lot of them have system uh, abuse problems and they're in a system. I understand that system. They're in a system where they just can't get the support they need. They right. can't get the ID, which leads to the job. They can't get the house. Right. Stuff. So we just do what we can. And we've had, you know, we've had several success stories that people have uh, have come down here and they've come back and visit us and they've said, uh, you know, I've got that job or I finally got into housing, you know, but that's rare, you know, but mm -hmm. we do what we can because my grandmother, Miss Ophelia, she was the Hova witness and she mm -hmm. got all her hours in in January, you know? <laughs> and so she used to knock on people's door, you know, mm -hmm. and say, I bring good news and they would scare right. her off. But, but her spiritual message wanted to do some of that as well. So what I'm hearing is Ophelia's is more than just a transactional business. This is bigger than commerce. This is truly purpose driven. You're honoring your grandmama, you're plugged into the community. You're a part of revitalization, but you're also giving back and you're able to create this just symbiotic relationship with the community. What we want to do is we want to educate and we want to amaze. We want to give yeah. the people, the kids in the area, primarily the experience to see how stuff grows. Mm -hmm. um, we want to brighten people's day as they walk by, you mm -hmm. know? So in the country, this is nothing, but being in this particular space, you right. know, that makes it, that makes it so important. That's what we wanted to do. So many kids growing up, they, they don't even have this experience mm -hmm. because of uh, how our cities are developed. They don't mm -hmm. have backyards. They don't really, some of them don't even have porches if they live in these high rise buildings. A lot of things we plan on the outside is for the children from the, the heirloom, raspberries and blackberries. We've mm -hmm. got the beehives. We've got the flow hives that give them opportunity to put a little cup in there and just turn the spigot and mm -hmm. get it right from, from the hive. So we want to educate and we want to amaze and show people that it can be done. This is very cool because I, in all my years of living, I've never seen grapevines, honestly. Yeah. Everything in here is ser serving more than one purpose. So this is going to provide an all natural shade. Okay. For me. Yeah. So, I can tell. Yeah. yeah. So as, so we have four on this side and we have four on that side and it'll take a, these are three years old, but eventually it's going to provide us fruit. It's going to provide us shade. It's going to drop in the in the fall, you know, yeah. and so we can let more light in. But sustainability really was the key. Would you consider education a part of affiliates? Because it kind of sounds like even working with the houseless community or volunteers, do you feel like you are in a way teaching people like about urban farming, like you spreading the message yeah, basically? I do. The feeling that you can get when you grow your own food, when mm -hmm. you're sustainable like that, you know, and it could be something from deal or mm -hmm. something, the microgreens or whatever, but mm -hmm. it's just an incredible feeling, you know, and when I tell people we're out here, we're printing our own money, you know, we're growing stuff, we're letting it go to seed. This is going to seed right now right? right so we take that and we save that seed we never have to buy deal seed again right ever you know that's true and so we that's can sell true. the plant we can yeah. grow the plant we can use it and you can do that with almost everything we do a lot of cloning here as well as our, all of our mints that's why we have brand consistency mm -hmm. every ounce of mint that we sell that we package and we sell tastes the same why does it do that because it's a cutting we take that we put that in a cloner which is basically a container with a oxygen bubbler mm -hmm. in it and leave it for two weeks it grows roots it's genetically identical and so the taste is the same the taste is not different So I noticed that you have two greenhouses here yeah. on Vine Street. What's the future of Ophelia's? I know your grandmama is proud. Yeah. I can only imagine that you have an immense amount of pride just like yeah. honoring her name and her legacy. But what's next for Ophelia's? I'm taking over a 30 acre farm in Kansas. Which okay. has a lot of history behind it. And so that um, we're growing other stuff like um, 
orange and yellow flesh watermelon. Oh my we're goodness. growing the cantaloupes, we're growing the tomatoes and things like that. And that just allows us to diversify a little bit more, you know? And so um, we want to pivot the motto a little bit. Mm -hmm. We still want to do, we're still going to do the herbs, you know, mm -hmm. but we're going to uh, branch out into more recession proof crops. And so um, since we have the land and it has a lot of history behind it, you know, it was farmed by the potato king. Okay. You know? And so, um, <laughs> The, the future, you know, is just going to be super bright with what we want to do in, um, as far as agriculture. Are you applying some of those same principles that you have here on Vine Street as far as outreach and education there? Absolutely. You know, and it's a great opportunity for us um, for um, training as well. So mm -hmm. we have volunteers to come out and help and um, learn how to grow some stuff and plant some stuff. And uh, we just want to grow more produce yeah. for more people, you know, and, and do something really cool for the community as far as education is concerned. Mike, thank you so much for having me in this amazing space on today. I know that your grandma would be so proud Thank you for coming out today, and I'm sure she would. You know, this is all inspired, you know, by Miss Ophelia mm -hmm. and her uh, community service, her wanting to give back to her community, you know, wanting to uh, make a difference in the community. And so, you know, she was a very strong woman. Two of her kids played in the NFL, you right. know, and so I had to step up my game up. And so, right. you know, this is my gift to the world, you know. Amazing. What a great legacy. Well, thank you. Yeah, she was a great woman. She always had work for you to do, which is what I <laughs> teach my boys. So we wake up every morning and we do some work. And